Greetings, comrades and friends. Greetings from the Marxist influencer. It's been two years since I last made a video in English. But um, it's uh, quite understandable as all my previous videos were aimed primarily at the Romanian audience. Today, however, I will aim this video primarily at international audience, mainly from Papua and from the beautiful country of Papua New Guinea, one of the one of the jewels, jewels in the crown of Mother Earth, one of the most beautiful countries on Earth. The main reason behind this video is that I got many Facebook friends from Papua New Guinea. I got so many friends from Papua New Guinea on Facebook and a few on Instagram that I lost count of them. <laughs> I even lost count of them. So many, I don't know, but uh, surely there are, I have more friends on Facebook than uh, from my own Romania. I got more friends from PNG than uh, friends from my own Romania. Um, <clears throat> which I think can be accounted for by the fact Papua New Guineans are such beautiful people. And I got a soft spot and got, I got a soft spot. I have to confess, I have to confess for Papua New Guinea women. Um, I like the Papua New Guinea women and the Papua New Guinea women like me. Uh, <clears throat> To me at least, to me at least, love for women is an essential precondition for love for humanity. My love for humanity, as a communist of course, is not an abstract love. It's uh, derived from concrete love for concrete persons. And I have to admit, I love women more than I love men. <laughs> um, what is it that I found so beautiful about Papua New Guinea? Well, all the Papua New Guineans, but especially the women, are so beautiful, so warm, they are so outgoing, they love life, they love to smile. Uh, <clears throat> When it comes to a chat on Messenger, to chatting on Messenger, it's often the women who initiate conversation with me, which is um, rather strange because here in Romania, it's the men who must be supposed to initiate conversation on Facebook with a woman. Uh, with Papua New Guineans, it's somehow different. It is them the PNG women who initiate conversation with me on uh, the Facebook chat. Which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Because the woman ought not to be shy. A woman ought to court men to initiate court, courting behavior as often, if not more often, than men should. You see? Um, I find the Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinean people are black. I have to confess that I find black more attractive than white. Yeah, I'm a race traitor. I'm a race traitor. I like black and I like dark, dark skin, black skin more than I like white skin. The woman in dark skin as well as the woman in black skin is more attractive than the woman in white skin. And of course, the same should be true in reverse. I think white women should be attracted to should be attracted to black men as well. <laughs> so we're gonna have a big multiracial love party on this planet Earth. Yes, the the. The future of uh, the future is hum of humanity, the race mixing, 
race mixing uh, is the future, I'm afraid, uh, has to be acknowledged that this race mixing is the future of humanity. Race mixing um, has begun in full force in Papua New Guinea, as many Papua New Guinea women have taken for husbands white, white men, especially white men from Australia. Papua New Guinea is a hotspot for white Australian men seeking black romance, the romance of a black woman, which is nice, which is beautiful. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Serena Williams himself, herself has a, has a white husband. That's a, this is the trend, this is the way to go. This is what the future has in store for us all. So I like Papua New Guinea women because they are, they are beautiful, they are warm, they are outgoing. Black is beautiful, yeah. To be, beauty, to be, to be black is to be beautiful. And to be beautiful is to be black. That's not to say that is not to say that only black people are, are beautiful. No. White people too can be beautiful. But, uh, but uh, provided they do their utmost to emulate blacks. White people too can be beautiful, but they have to emulate uh, blacks. Um, they have to, to stay in the sun a lot to have uh, uh, to get a good tan, because you have to you have to understand black white people too were once were once black white people too were once black. Um, it's only after they become it's only after they became corrupted by bourgeois civilization that they began to turn fair skinned. They, they did not acquire their fair skin until they became corrupted by bourgeois civilization. They too, a, a, until fairly recent times, until a couple of centuries ago, they too used to be dark. White people of, of 200 or 300 years ago were much darker than white people of today. So white people have to relearn how to be black. They have to relearn how to be beautiful. You know? Uh, <clears throat> I have to demolish, I have to say, I have to demolish a conservative myth that has found wide acceptance among conservative people, but it's just a myth that Facebook somehow destroys human relations. Well, I got news for you. Facebook is the greatest tool for expanding, for enhancing for strengthening human relations, the greatest tool for strengthening human relations ever. I have to confess, what I learn about Papua New Guinea comes not so much from books, but from Facebook friends. I owe less than a half my, my knowledge of Papua New Guinea, I owe it less than half to books, primarily books by Jared Diamond, and more than a half I owe it to having friends from Papua New Guinea. Without Facebook friends from Papua New Guinea, I would have known much less, I would have known much less about Papua New Guinea, about this beautiful land of paradise birds, of, of huge cassowary birds, of tree kangaroos, kangaroos that live up high up in the trees. Without Facebook, I would have known much less about, about PNG than I, than, I, uh, than I know now. Facebook is a great tool for expanding knowledge, the greatest tool for expanding knowledge that has ever existed. Think about it. You read when you read from books, eh, books are great, and books will never disappear. They will always be with, they will always be with us. But when you, when you read books, you read. Maybe about general things, general things about a country of eight million people and covering twice the and, and covering twice the area of my own Romania. 
but uh, with Facebook, you get to see people, to, you get to observe people in, the, in their daily lives. And that counts for a lot. That's how I learned that Papuan so smile so much, that Papuan women are so out outgoing, they are so bold. The opposite of shy European women who, who wait to be courted. That Papua New Guinea women are, are so damn masculine, which is good because I like masculinization of women and feminization of men. Men ought to be shy and timid. Women ought to be bold. And it was also thanks to Facebook that I learned about how much Papua New Guinean peoples treasure the national day, which happened to be yesterday. The national day of Papua New Guinea, the day of independence, for formal independence from Britain, because they still have the then king of Britain as the head of state. The day of independence was yesterday. And um, what, an appropriate, what an appropriate occasion for me to dedicate this video of mine to the great country of Papua New Guinea. Um, they, they treasure their national day like much, much more warmly than Romanian people treasure their national day. Romanian people gather and wave flags. So much for a national holiday. They do not smile, they do not rejoice. Papua New Guinea people dress in their national costumes, um, in their traditional headgear. Uh, wearing feathers uh, on their heads, a crown made of feathers. They dress in their traditional attire. It's a celebra it's a, it's an ex it's an explosion of joy, of beauty, of colors, of music and song, music and color. It's very much akin to the Carnival in Rio, to the Carnival in Rio, Brazil. Yes, there is a downside. There is a dark side with it to this tale, and that is the prevalence of domestic violence, violence against women in Papua New Guinea, which is the, which is the direct result of Christianization, not, not, not entirely of Christianization, but also of the introduction of capitalism, because ca uh, evangelism always comes hand in hand with capitalism. Evangelism, evangelism comes hand in hand with capitalism. White people, we the white people who, who were, were the cause of, much, of so much suffering in the world, we brought our poison, we brought our poisonous way of life to Papua New Guinea too, which was among the last countries on earth to be colonized. Papua New Guinea was not colonized until the early 20th, 20th century by Germans in the north and by British in the south, when uh, the Germans were defeated in World War I, England acquired the entire country uh, through its dominion Australia, became a British dominion and sti it still is a British dominion since that uh, bloody king of England is still, the, is still the head of state, the nominal head of state. In any case, we brought this poison to Papua New Guinea, evangelism and capitalism. And the result is the worsening, the, continuum, the continuous worsening in the condition of the Papua New Guinea women. There was domestic violence in Papua New Guinea before Christianity, but it was less than it is now. Papua New Guinea was a patriarchy society before Christianity, because they were not hunter-gatherers like the Sun people in Kalahari or the Pygmies in Congo. They were still agriculturalists. They cultivated um, sugarcane, banana trees, taro and yams. They were agriculturalists, okay, and they were not hunter-gatherers. They, uh, they kept pigs and dogs as domesticated animals. So they, they were not uh, intensive farmers because the they had no ox and horses to pull the plow, to, to be harnessed at the plow. They had, they had no horses to ride on, but they were still agriculturalists, primitive agriculturalists, because they cultivated the land, and as domestic animals, they kept only pigs and dogs. They, they, they were a patriarchy society, but they were less patriarchist than uh, 
after colonization and subsequent evangelization. Um, in uh, New Guinea, um, regions that were that were patriarchist to a lesser extent became patriarchist, and regions that were more patriarchist than others became more patriarchist than ever before. Non-patriarchist societies became patriarchist, and patriarchist societies became extremely patriarchist. That's the tragedy. But this, uh, it's important to point out that this thread, that this dark side of Papua New Guinea violence against women was introduced by us white people. It was our fault, not their fault. You see? A good thing is that women are striking back. Women in Papua New Guinea have started to become powerful, to engage in uh, male activities, for example, playing rugby. A lot of women in Papua New Guinea play rugby, which is definitely a beautiful thing. The woman who plays rugby is more beautiful than the woman who dances ballet, ha ha ha, or who plays gymnastics. The, the woman who plays rugby is more beautiful than, the, than a woman who plays gymnastics. You see, uh, it's a good thing because uh, more women who play rugby will mean in the long run, in the medium and long run, less women who are subject to, to, to domestic violence. Okay, so there is a bright side in the dark side as well. Thank you people from Papua New Guinea for being my Facebook friends. I need more people like you. I dream of having not hundreds of Facebook friends from PNG. I dream of having thousands of, of Facebook friends from PNG one day. Um, greetings and heaven bless Papua New Guinea. Heaven bless PNG. Heaven bless its beautiful women.